Today is probably my favorite day of the week. Uh, today is bread baking day. I bake bread about once a week and sometimes more than that. Last week I didn't make any, so I'm really looking forward to, the, the, to it this week. Um, whether it's sandwich bread, just a loaf of bread, or bagels actually is what I have done. Not last week, but the couple of weeks before. I've been on a bagel kick trying to find the perfect bagel recipe, and not just any bagels, sourdough. Sourdough is what I've been playing around with. My name is Rachel, and today we're in the kitchen, and I'm gonna show you my process for taking care of my sourdough starter and making sourdough bread. This recipe that we're gonna be making today is by Hannah of Ballerina Farms. I think I got her name right. I'm really bad at remembering names, but um, it is such a easy to follow, minimal effort recipe that it is my go-to. Um, it's actually my sister that got me into sourdough uh, sometime last year. I can't remember the exact date, but she started doing it first. And then I started just using, um, I started my starter using all purpose flour and water, of course. That's all you need is flour and water for a sourdough starter. And it just was not working. Like I could not get it to rise. And if it did, it just didn't make good bread. My first loaf of bread actually turned out like a hockey puck. So if you've been trying to do sourdough starter and sourdough for a while now, and you've had the same experience, hang in there with me. Maybe this is something that you can try that might work out. First, I'm gonna show you what my starter looks like. So as you can see, it's exploding everywhere. I've actually never had that happen before, but I normally use a bigger jar to make to store it in when I'm doing the bread. This is the jar that I keep it in when it's in the fridge throughout the week, and we'll go in more into detail in that later. Um, but when I wake it up from the fridge, take it out and get ready to make bread, the night before I'm gonna make bread is when I put it in a bigger jar. So. I'm not sure where exactly to start with this so that it all makes sense, but this is ready to use. So first we're going to make get the bread going and then we'll feed the starter and talk more about that process. Uh, I will tell you today is Saturday, so just so you can have an idea of a timeline, what I did was Thursday morning I took my starter out of the fridge and then Thursday night I gave it a feeding and then Friday night, which was last night, I fed it again, and then this is where we're at now. So it's now 4.30, um, and I would say it's at its peak. It's only gonna start dropping from here. I will also say that this recipe I have done all different ways. I've used it, used my starter when it's at its peak, I've used it when it's starting to fall, and I've used it when it's completely fallen and hungry and ready to be fed, and I have noticed no difference. Which is really strange because if you do sourdough and you've learned, like, if, and you've read all the things that are out there, everything says to use it when it's at its peak. So, I don't know, maybe I'm misunderstanding the recipes and stuff. Um, I will, I read, when I was first starting, I read so much information about sourdough and I was feeling super overwhelmed and I was following this strict, I was strictly following this recipe of a one to one to one ratio, one part sourdough starter, one part flour, and one part water. And it just was not working. So I ended up tossing that starter and then tried again. The next one did work, it worked well. And then I got a really sick and didn't wanna to touch it for a long time and sat in the fridge and at the time I thought I had killed it. I now know that I could have brought it back from then, from that, but I just didn't even wanna think about food, so I just tossed it. And then I started this third one. So this is Laura, and I feed this starter with bread flour. This is what I use, and it's worked really well. I've been doing this uh, for, gosh, I wish I could remember an exact date. I wanna say maybe since October, September, October, somewhere around then. And I probably should have looked because I, I bet I could find an exact date from when I started uh, through Instagram. But um, since then, I've been making bread almost once a week. My starter is very active, it bubbles, and it does all sorts of great things, and it makes really good bread. So 
Hopefully you'll, if you've been struggling, this recipe helps you or maybe some of these tips help you. Uh, the biggest tip that I have is don't take it too seriously. Just experiment, have fun, and find what works best for you. There's one thing that I've learned from sourdough starter and that is that everybody's is different. Every single starter is different and that's because the temperature of your house is different. The uh, you yourself are different. So like you're touching it and like that's, this is a living thing. And so that's gonna affect the way that it is and the way that it grows and the way that it reacts. So there's so many factors that play into making a sourdough starter do what it does. And that's gonna change with every single one out there. So just experiment, try it out, have fun, and don't take it too seriously. All right, I've got my recipe here and let's see. Okay, so like I said, this recipe is from Ballerina Farm. Uh, my sister shared it with me. She has tweaked it and adapted it a little bit to find what works best for her. And she is the one that has helped me get success with this. So I follow what she does. She's actually even changed the recipe again since she sent me this, but this works, so I'm not gonna mess with it. Um, my sister, she sells her bread. So if you're in Hawaii, maybe reach out to her. And if you don't wanna make your own bread, but you still wanna eat delicious sourdough bread for the fact that it's extremely delicious, but also good for you, um, let her know. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is measure out my starter. So I'm measuring in grams. I'm gonna zero out my scale for the bowl. Make sure there's no dust in it. And then I'm gonna grab a spoon. Okay, wow, I just cannot believe what this starter is doing. It's just crazy. <laughs> it's so cool. So we are gonna need 250 grams of starter. And like I said, experiment, have fun with it. I have tried this recipe with the starter at all different stages and had success every time. even have enough in here. I actually have another starter going. So I'm going to grab that and take some out of there because this is not enough. It's probably not enough because it's poured all over the counter over there. But there, I don't normally have two going. The only reason I have two going right now is because I'm also doing another recipe tonight and I didn't have a jar big enough to make a big enough batch. So hopefully now I have enough for my other recipe. All right, 251, close enough. And yeah, I don't know if that's gonna be enough for what I need for my other one, but that's okay. Okay, so now I'm gonna zero out my scale again and I need 735 grams of lukewarm water. And you want it to be filtered water, you don't want any chlorine. Seven hundred and thirty-five grams. So if you're just starting out with this and you don't know how to tell if your starter is ready to make bread with, a good way to tell is that it will float when you put it in water. So first sign I would look for is, is it bubbling and is it doubling in size? That's why I have this rubber band here. I don't always do that, but I was just testing something the other day. So I put the rubber band on and just kept it there. But if it's doubling in size, that's a good indicator. And then you should be able to take a little dollop, put it in a cup of water, and it will float. So I'm just using a Danish whisk to mix this up. Looks nice and milky right now. And bubbly. Okay, 
just a quick mix. And now I'm going to zero out my scale again, and I'm gonna do 27 grams of salt. And there is much better salt out there that you can use, but I just am using Target brand table salt. And it works just fine and it's nice and affordable. So 27 grams of salt. So we got 28. I just love dough. I love making bread. I love playing with dough. I love pie crust. I make just a regular yeast bread sometimes. It's just so fun. Okay. Just something that makes me really happy. Now it's time for the flour. We need a thousand grams of bread flour. Zero out my scale again. So sometimes I do about 700 grams of regular unbleached bread flour and then uh, 300 grams of whole wheat, but this time I'm just gonna do all unbleached, regular white flour. Okay, Give that a thousand grams. And now it's time to mix. That's it, that's all you need. I did forget to mention is when you're making your bread just make sure to leave a little bit of your sourdough starter in the jar so that you can continue uh, using it. You don't need much just all I've got here is whatever is on the edges of the jar obviously I need to rinse the side but um, that'll be plenty to keep it going keep it alive and the older your starter is the stronger it'll get the more active it'll be. So don't use it all and then start over because usually when you start with a fresh brand new starter, it does take a couple weeks to uh, be ready to start making bread with. What I did when I started mine is I was at the time just making a no need yeast bread recipe that I, um, that's from Becky of Acre Homestead. I love her no need bread recipe and it's just a regular yeast bread and that's what I was doing and so I wasn't while I did get like I was excited to start making sourdough because I had my starter going but I wasn't in a rush so I waited probably like I want to say over a month before I actually made my first loaf of bread with it and during that time I was feeding it every day because I was keeping it on my counter and I feed it at night and um, um, I was just making like discard recipes because you have to take some out every time you feed it. You do not want to keep too much in there. You really only need a little bit. For this jar, probably like I save a teaspoon, maybe a tablespoon for, from each feeding. And so what I would do is just keep a jar of whatever I was taking out every night in the fridge. And then I was making cookies with it and I've made brownies, um, pancakes, waffles, all sorts of stuff. Okay, so this is just about mixed. It's really sticky at this stage, but that's okay. Don't worry. And I'm gonna come closer and show you what it looks like. I just wanna get some off the sides. Just make sure it's mixed nice and well. little arm workout and it is hot in my kitchen today the weather has been so interesting here in Phoenix today is April 1st and it's been like today I think is almost 80 degrees yesterday it was about 80 degrees but the day before that was only 60 and um, it's still getting pretty chilly at night it's really nice I'm not complaining and I know that those of you in like really cold areas are probably like, what the heck, that's not cold. 
but here in Phoenix, 60 is cold, especially for this time of year, I think. I um, have only lived here a year, and everyone's saying it's abnormally cold, but also this time last year, we were running our AC regularly, and we actually are still using the heater at night, so yeah, it's still chilly. Okay. I'm going to say this is mixed, well, still just trying to scrape some of this off the sides is all. I just kind of scrape and then like pull towards the middle. Just make sure all of that flour is mixed. And then after this, I'm going to come over, I'm going to come closer to show you what this looks like. And then we're gonna cover it and I actually just realized I need to go put some laundry in because I don't have any clean kitchen towels right now and I'm gonna be using a few of them for this process but um, I'm gonna cover it and let it sit I'll set a timer on my phone for 45 minutes and in that time while this is sitting I'm gonna show you how I feed my starter and how I care for that all right so this is what it looks like right now. Very sticky. It's not smooth. This is perfect. We're going to let it sit for 45 minutes. And I've got to find something to cover it with. All right, I've got my dough covered with the towel. This is not the towel I want to be using, but it'll work. Uh, until my other kitchen towels are clean. That's not a kitchen towel. But um, what I did was I wet it, wrung out the water, just covered it, and then that way the top of the bread doesn't get dry and it's gonna sit for 45 minutes. So right now, what we're gonna do is feed our starter. This jar is a mess, needs to be washed. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna scrape out what I can from the inside and put it in a clean jar. And this is what we'll keep it in to, for our feeding. Like I said, we don't need much. So I encourage you to do your own research, look into this. There is so much information out there and everyone does something differently. Almost everything that I have read conflicts with the next thing that I read. And then when my sister told me what she was doing and how she doesn't wait until her starter, or she doesn't use her starter when it's at its peak to make bread with, she uses it when it's fallen and it's hungry, which to me makes sense because once it's fallen back down, that means it's hungry. And then you're mixing a whole bunch of flour and water with it to make the dough. That just makes sense. So when she told me that, I was like, oh, this is so much more flexible than some people make it out to be. And I have had so much more fun with it since then. Just try not to stress on all the little details. And if you find that what you're doing isn't working, start tweaking it a bit. Okay, so got a little bit here in my jar. And what I'm gonna do is add a little bit of water to this. And I don't measure anything. When you're first starting out, it might be a good idea to measure so that you get a good visual of, you know, a good balance. Cause you don't wanna, unless you're baking every day, you don't wanna keep this huge. We just want a little bit in here just to feed it. So I just eyeball it and go off of consistency. So I just start with a little splash of water and then mix it together. Give it a good stir. And now I'm gonna add flour. This is the same bread flour, I just got it in a jar. And I'm actually gonna refill my jar. So I usually do about two scoops. I think this is about a tablespoon. Now mix, mix, mix. All right, and I see it's really thick, so I'm gonna add a little splash of water. The consistency that I go for is a little bit more dry than what I've seen other people do. And that's only because I've noticed that 
the next day, once it's risen and fallen, it's really runny, like watery. So I found if I make, if I start out at the feeding with it a little bit more dry, it's a better consistency the next day, like when I go to bake with it. And I'll show you, I'll come closer so that you can see that consistency that I look for. And I'm not always perfect. Sometimes it's a little thicker, sometimes it's a little runnier. It doesn't really matter. I just know that I don't like when I go to bake with it and it's super runny. And yours might do fine if you add a little bit more water. It might be a great consistency the next day. Okay, so see, there's not very much. This is a, how big is this jar? I think this is a pint. Does it say on here? There's numbers, but I can't really see them very well. Pretty sure this is a pint. I'm gonna sneeze. <laughs> Excuse me, sorry. I'm sneezy today. There's a lot of stuff blooming right now. Okay. So, see, it's not dry, but it is thick. And sticky. All right, so I only bake on the weekends. If I'm gonna be making more than baking more than that, I'll do things a little bit differently. But for the sake of keeping this video simple, uh, I'm just gonna tell you my regular routine. This is what I do almost every week. I bake on the weekends. So I already told you today's Saturday. I took this out on Thursday morning. Sometimes I'll take it out Friday morning, but I like to give it, you know give it a, get it a bit more active um, before I'm gonna bake. So I took it out Thursday morning, let it sit on the counter, and then Thursday night, I fed it. Just to probably have about the same amount in the jar. And then Friday night, last night, that's when I did a big feeding. I did about six, no, I think I did eight scoops. Um, and normally that's enough. I think the problem, oh, I don't know. I don't want to make this too confusing. I think the problem was that the starter is lighter, which this might, this is kind of just my observations and I'm kind of speculating and I could be totally off here, but I think my theory is that the starter is lighter when it's at its peak. So if I had waited for it to fall, it would have, I probably would have gotten the full 250 grams out of this jar, the batch that I made because I did eight scoops of flour. Now this jar I did six, sorry, six scoops. So about six tablespoons. Um, anyways, basically what you wanna make sure is when you're, so the night before you're gonna be baking, when you're feeding your starter, you wanna make sure that you're making it big enough so that you have enough to bake with. So for this recipe, we needed 250 grams. So make sure that you'll have 250 grams in here. This is not nearly enough to bake with. Um, Maybe for some recipe, but not for this bread recipe. Um, I'm just laughing at myself because I'm kind of rambling and going off on a tangent here. But anyway, so Friday night, I fed it, gave it a big feeding to make sure that I would have enough to bake with today. So then it's about, it was about 4.30 when I started this on Saturday and made, the, made our dough. And now feeding the starter. And what I'm gonna do is it's gonna go straight into the fridge and it's gonna stay there until next week. Thursday when I go to make bread again. So I'm not gonna feed it any time during this week when it's there in the fridge. The next time it'll get fed again is when I take it out Thursday morning. I'll feed it that night. So it's simple. You really don't have a lot of waste. The only discard that I'll have from this is from the feeding Thursday night, which won't be much because there's not much in here. And then from the feeding Friday night. And what I like to do is I save that in a jar in the fridge and when I'm ready, I just make a batch of cookies, chocolate, sourdough chocolate chip cookies. They're so good. The recipe that I use is from Mary Grace Bread. And if you follow her on Instagram, she posts so much information about sourdough and it's really simple and easy to follow. I've got a fly in here, gross. Okay, but anyways, now I will see you back. It's been about 15 minutes. So I'll see you back in about 30 minutes.
So it's been 45 minutes since our dough has been sitting. And what we're gonna do now is our first stretch and fold. This is the best part. So I am, this is sort of similar to kneading your dough. What we're gonna be doing is building strength here. So I am not gonna put flour on my hands. I'm gonna just wet them with warm water. My hands are nice and wet. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of scrape some off the edges and I'm gonna grab my dough, pull it up and over to the other side. And I'm gonna do that all the way around. Pull it up, fold it over to the other side. I am stretching and I'm folding. And as long as your hands are wet, you might have to add some more water to them. The dough shouldn't stick real bad, even though it is a very sticky dough. I'm gonna get a little bit more water on my hands. I'm just gonna do that a couple times. You can, you can see as you do this, the dough starts to get a little bit more stiff. That's a good thing. Stretch and fold. And I just kind of tuck in the edges. I know you can't see what I'm doing. I'll do another video close up because we are going to do this every 45 minutes for until we've done about four or five of them. I'll show you some indicators that I look for to let you know that you are done working the dough and that it's ready to do its bulk fermentation in the fridge. So that was just our first one. We've got many more to do over the next, every 45 minutes, over the next few hours. Uh, what I'm gonna do right now is go throw some laundry in and let this sit a little bit longer. So I went out to put laundry in and I realized that Pete already washed all my kitchen towels for me and they were just in the dryer. That was really nice of him. So I got all of those folded and then while we're waiting to do our next stretch and fold, I am out in the garden and I am going to get dinner started. We, I am making um, cilantro lime chicken for dinner tonight. You can see all the dogs back there. Those dog kennels, by the way, are uh, my compost bins. So we don't keep the dogs in there. Um, I think I'm making cilantro lime chicken for dinner with like it's a really loud plane <laughs> and then I make an avocado like uh, salad with it and so I'm out in the garden going to pick some cilantro so I'll show you what the what I'm calling the apothecary garden is looking like right now so this is just a quick view of it we've got this beautiful trellis up top but I'm gonna step over this fence and try not to fall. But nasturtiums are going crazy right now. I love these flowers. That's toad flax and they look like mini orchids. Is it gonna focus? No, maybe not. Those are cool. Yeah, anyways, just a quick glance what I'm here for. Oh wait, I was going to show you these sunflowers because they're beautiful and when I'm in the kitchen this is what I see out the window and I just love it so, so much. Got lavender. I've harvested tons of lavender. I'm going to do a video about making lavender infused oil. Can't wait for that. Okay, cilantro. Focus, Rachel. This is what we are here for. It's just such a nice day today. Um, it's the weekend, Pete's home, he's taking a nap. The dogs are all sleepy, they've already been fed, so they're all just chilling. Cat's sleeping on the couch, she spent the whole day outside in the yard with Pete, supervised of course. Um, I took a nice long nap and we're making bread together. I'm just feeling very grateful for this beautiful weekend. Wanna say hi, Paul? Hello. Here you pups. 
It's like they're they're really upset that they can't get in here, but this is a no dog zone. Huh. You step all over my plants. <laughs> okay, let's get back to the kitchen. It's now been 45 minutes, so we're gonna do our next stretch and fold. I'm gonna show you what the dough is looking like right now. You've already got a bubble right there. It's a good sign. And you can see just since we've done, we've only done one stretch and fold so far, the dough already is looking smoother. So I'm gonna get some water on my hands. My hands are clean. I'm just gonna get water on them and we'll be going. So we're gonna do a few more of these the next time I come in to do one. I'll bring the camera closer so that you can see close up what this looks like. There's also lots of videos out there, both on Instagram and here on YouTube that will give very good directions on stretch and folds, why you want to do them. We're just building strength in this dough. All right. And I am making dinner right now at the same time. And that's what I mean by how much, why I love this recipe so much, because it is just minimal effort. We mixed the dough, that took a few minutes. And um, then you just basically let it sit there for 45 minutes before you do anything with it again. And each stretch and fold really only takes a minute, maybe a little bit longer. So. You can have other things going in the background while this sits and rests and while you do have to have some like time management or like a bit of a plan ahead of time to make sure that you are starting early enough in the day so that you can get all your stretch and folds done before you want to go to bed because this is going to do a bulk fermentation in the fridge overnight but um this is just if you i like to follow a I like to have a, an example of a schedule to follow because that sort of gives me an idea so that I don't have to like think so much about it. So I was really grateful that my sister helped me out and did that for me and sent over her exact time frame and methods and stuff. She really helped me in the beginning. So hopefully this helps you if you're like, oh no, like when do I start? How much time do I need? Don't overthink it. Just try it. You'll find what works best for you. Um, but if it's helpful to you to have a schedule to follow, you can use mine as an example. I'm giving time frames throughout this whole video. So I hope that helps. All right. Um, yeah, now it just has to sit for another 45 minutes before we do anything else with it. I'm gonna get dinner cooking. Pete's awake from his nap. <laughs> um, when I went out to the garden to get this laundry, I was just saying what a nice day it was and that you got to take a nap. I was taking a nap. The dogs were all, or I took a nap earlier. Dogs were all chilling. It's just a beautiful weekend. It Pete's really making was. Some, some just dinner. Just I already ate. Mm -hmm. And hopefully that last video where I brought the camera in close, you could see better how the stretch and fold process works. Um, you can tweak it, whatever you feel like works best for you. Lots, like I said, lots, or did I say this? There's lots of videos out there um, about the stretch and fold process and how to do that. This is just how I do it. Um, so this is our fourth one, I think. I've kind of lost count now. But I'm gonna just now look to see if I think that the dough is ready to go in the fridge overnight. Um, that's where it's gonna finish fermenting. And then, or rising bulk fermentation is done in the fridge overnight and then tomorrow morning we'll come back into the kitchen together and I'll just show you the process of shaping the bread and baking it so we're almost done here for the night I'm gonna probably speed up this part um, while I do the stretch and fold and then actually no let me get some water on my hands and I'll show you what we're looking for So what I like to do to test to see if 
the dough is ready for the fridge is just how stretchy it is and how strong it is. This is the window pane test and this looks really good. I'm going to do this stretch and fold. Oh, we got a rip. It's okay though. We got it pretty thin before it ripped. I think I'm going to do one more after this and then it'll go in the fridge. There is a such thing as over fermenting, so we want to be careful of that as well. You know, I think I am going to just put it in the fridge after this. It looks really nice and smooth and I think it's ready for it's ready for bed. We've got our starter in the fridge. That's going to stay there until next weekend when I do my baking next weekend. Yeah, we've got this beautiful dough here. Do a little bit of kneading. It's nice and smooth. Huge difference from when we first mixed it and started out. I'm really happy with how this is looking. So I'm going to keep the moist towel over the top. That way it doesn't dry out in the fridge. And then the recipe says to keep it in there for about eight hours. So overnight. And I usually do no more than 12 hours. So it's about eight o'clock right now. That means I'm going to wake up probably about 8 a.m. And I'll start the shaping process. We'll bring you back in here to do that with me. Okay. Exciting. Good morning. We've got a lot happening here in the kitchen right now. Um, I'm making bagels at the same time, but it's time to shape our bread. I actually, my dough scraper is all wet, so I'm going to just rinse it and dry it off. its bulk fermentation and now it is time to do our first shaping so I've got a floured surface here I'm just gonna dump the dough out and last night we did a total of I think four stretch and folds I did lose count <laughs> gonna split this in half because this recipe makes two loaves and it is very cold from being in the fridge I'm just gonna Squish it down to flatten it out. And my hands are clean. I've just been making bagels, which is literally the exact same dough. So I'm not worried about it. Now I'm just going to fold it. Grab a bowl to put our towel in. I do not have proofing baskets, so I just use a bowl about the size of what the loaf's going to be and put a towel in it. I do want to put some flour on the bottom though. Put our little bread in there. Now it's gonna rest on the counter at room temperature for 20 minutes. And we're gonna do the same thing with the other one.
It's been 20 minutes since we did the first shaping on our bread, so I'm just gonna take it out now and do a second shape. We've got some bubbles here, and then I'm gonna put it in the fridge to rest for another hour before we bake it. Right now, all I'm gonna do is kind of just tuck the ends in and try to just make it into a better loaf shape. I'm not gonna flatten it out again. I don't know if that's what you're supposed to do with the second shape, but I never do. Some more flour in the proofing basket. Tuck it in there just make sure everything's nice and tucked in and then I'm going to sprinkle some flour on the top I think I need to grab more flour I like to give it a little pat Tell it it's a good little bread. Now it's gonna go back in the fridge for one hour, at least. I can sit in the fridge like this after it's been shaped for up to five days before baking. I have left it for five days and it's great. The longer you leave it in there um, after this second shaping, the more sour the flavor gets. So I actually often will bake one loaf the day I make it after so put it back shape it put it back in the fridge for an hour and then I'll bake one and I'll leave the other one in the fridge for a couple days then that way we have fresh bread twice in one week instead of making them both at the same time and having to eat through them but I have plans I bought a bunch of really good lunch meat yesterday I bought turkey and roast beef and salami and I want to make sandwiches this week so I am going to bake both of these today and what I'm going to do is with one of them I'm going to make french toast and with the other one, I'm gonna save for, I'm gonna use for sandwiches throughout the week. So really excited about that. So when it's time to bake, what I'm gonna do is put my Dutch oven in the oven with the oven cool, and I'm gonna let them come to temperature together, 400 and, I have to check my recipe, 450 degrees, I believe. And then put the bread in, and that, that's gonna bake for about 30 minutes with the lid on and then I take the lid off and let it brown. I leave the lid on until I can see that the bread is starting to turn brown. And then I take it off and just let that crust like really get some nice color to it. But I'll show you all that in a bit. We preheat our oven. So this is my Dutch oven. I use a cast iron one only because when I was ready to start baking bread, this is what I found first. I believe it was like $40. So. When it comes to sourdough, this is definitely the most expensive thing that you're going to have to buy unless you already have one. Um, you do need something to bake the bread in. Other than that, this is a super affordable process. So, put my oven at 450 with the Dutch oven in there. We're going to preheat it in the oven. score my dough I'm just gonna make a line and if you have like a really sharp blade this works a lot better I don't but it's okay just like to use what I have sometimes I get Pete to sharpen the knife for me before I do this but we didn't do that today hi I'm Pete my knife sharpener <laughs> fuzz from the towel and that is far from perfect but I'm sure it will still taste just fine okay now I'm gonna wait for the oven to preheat I'm gonna bake this in the oven for with the lid on on the Dutch oven for 40 minutes I think I said 30 earlier but I normally do about 40 at 30 minutes I will check it just to see I'm looking for the bread to have some browning on the top and if it doesn't, I'll keep the lid on for another 10 minutes 
So 40 minutes total, and then I'll take the lid off and bake for 10 minutes without the lid just to crisp up. When it comes out of the oven, I'm gonna let it sit for about an hour to cool and finish steaming on the inside before cutting into it. So I'm not gonna film that whole process. I'll just meet you back here when um, the dough is out and cooled and maybe by then I'll be ready to make some lunch. But I am gonna cook up both loaves today and I'm gonna make a sandwich for lunch with it. And I can't wait. I haven't had fresh bread in, in, when was the last time I made some? Two weeks ago, I think. So, got a nice bubble here. So when I, I'll bring you back here when I cut into it, that way you can see what the inside looks like. See you soon. I said I wasn't gonna show this process, but I do want to. Um, be warned, the Dutch oven has been preheating in the oven. It's very hot. I actually melted one of my oven mitts doing this before. So I now double them up. This one's nice and thick. I don't have a problem with it, but just be careful. And that's why we put the dough on the parchment paper because you need to be able to easily lift it to transfer it in and out of the, the Dutch oven. Oh, it's heavy. Just be careful, just a warning. See, nice and easy. We now have both loaves of bread out of the oven and I am sitting here outside. I just made myself a fresh uh, sandwich. I got some deli meat yesterday. I don't remember if I said this already, but I'm really excited to eat a sandwich with fresh homemade bread. Uh, it was still warm. I did let it cool for an hour, but just cutting into it, it smells amazing. I cannot wait to eat this. It was done just in time for lunch. Um, so I hope this video has inspired you. If you've been wanting to try sourdough, I hope that you do and tell me all about it. I'd love to hear it. Either message me on Instagram or comment on here and just let me know your experience. If you have any questions, I'd love to try to help you. Um, even if you just start a sourdough, I wanna hear all about it. Um, it was really great bringing you along with me on this journey, something that I really enjoy doing. It was my weekend baking and especially making bread and it was just fun to have you here throughout that whole process. Hopefully I explained everything well, like the entire process and I know it was a bit, it's a bit of a long process but it's not super labor intensive so I don't think I left anything out but if I did or if there's anything that you're confused on please leave a comment and I will try to help you and it's a beautiful day right now. I'm gonna eat some lunch and then chill for a little bit and I've got some dogs to bathe. It's nice and warm here in Phoenix. It's almost 80 degrees. I've been waiting for the weather to warm up so that I can bathe the dogs outside. And I think it's time I've put it off long enough, <laughs> but I know this sandwich is gonna make me wanna just take a nap, but I'm gonna try and push through. But it was really great hanging out and I hope you guys have a good rest of your day and I will see you next time. Bye. <laughs>
I have four very jealous dogs watching me right now. Also drinking some of our homemade kombucha. What a great lunch. <laughs>